and welcome to the Jazz Violin Podcast. This is episode four and I am chatting with Christian van Hemert. Hopefully my terrible pronunciation has still gotten that name across to you, Christian van Hemert. Christian is a Dutch violinist and guitarist, actually. Um, he plays with the Rosenberg Trio. If you don't know the Rosenberg Trio, they are one of the most famous and one of the most amazing sets of musicians playing in that Gypsy Jazz, Django Reinhardt style. Um, Christian, to me, is one of the guys who has really got that um, early Stefan Grappelli sound down. He's really captured the way that Grappelli played when he was playing with Django. And uh, in this interview, uh, we chat a little bit about how he has done that. We actually recorded this interview over the internet. We chatted on Skype and we recorded ourselves separately. So actually the um, the quality of this one is really, really good. We chatted for about an hour and a half. We covered many things, but it, it really was just focusing around jazz, learning jazz, um, internet trolls and uh, computer games. So, uh, oh yeah, please do subscribe on iTunes if that's how you get your podcasts I think most people do um, but yeah subscribe on iTunes or you can we're, we're on most po podcasting platforms so you can scrub, subscribe to any of those um, but please do subscribe because that's the only way you're going to get things straight away and straight to your phone or tablet or however you listen to things okay uh, let's go <laughs> You can start from the start. It doesn't matter where that start is. Uh, so the first thing to know is that I don't come from a musical family in the sense that there is no musicians in my family. But my father was very oh, right. a music aficionado. You know, there was the time that people were still collecting records. Yeah. You know, and the bigger your collection, yeah. the better. So he had a he had a very eclectic taste. So he had everything from classical to like uh, to jazz to to country mm -hmm. to what, whatever and I, I listened to everything as a as a kid so but one thing that really struck a chord with me was the the recording of Menuhin playing the Beethoven violin concerto okay right? yeah uh, yeah I really like that so that led me to wanting wanting to be able to play that instrument which was a violin so my yeah. my father they, they searched for a violin teacher and I took violin lessons and he was always playing music in the car and uh, one day he had a um, he had Grappelli and uh, Django there on there, yeah. Right? And I loved that. Of course, nobody knew. I mean, we knew it was jazz, but nobody knew in my family that that was improvised, right? So okay. I still remember being in the car with my father. I was maybe it was like eleven or twelve, and then I said, you know, oh, that sounds really great. I, I want to play that. So my father yeah. he called every music store. <laughs> to to get the sheep music yeah but of course there was no sheep music and uh like the fifth store the guy said uh sir that's all improvised so <laughs> my father said to me you know it's all improvised i said what does it mean i said i don't know just change the notes so he, he got me a i think he got me a, like a lead sheet for all of me or something and i would change all the notes but it didn't sound right so that was my adventure into jazz you know yeah uh, in the beginning and um I was actually pretty good uh, classical violin player. I had a, a very good teacher, Russian uh, from the Russian school, and um, I was accepted at a very young age into a, a conservatory. Uh, okay. I think I was accepted around maybe I was ten. So I was already at the conservatory when this this story with the uh, uh, with the Crapelli. and mm -hmm. I studied classical uh, violin. I studied for six hours a day uh, before school, after school, before dinner. I mean, there was the program. If you were accepted in that special program for, for, for children, you were expected to practice six hours a day, you know? Okay, yeah. And I was the only one in that uh, program, or it felt like it, that wasn't pushed by his parents, right? Because okay. my, 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 my folks, they went crazy <laughs> with all the practicing. <laughs> yeah. They actually uh, put isolation in one room because they couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> so... <laughs> But I was completely obsessed because the only thing I wanted to be able to do was actually play the Beethoven Violin Concerto. Okay. Uh, I still remember asking my violin teacher, like maybe after three months, like how long is it going to take 
me to be able to play that and then she, she'd say something like maybe when you're 15 she something like that yeah <laughs> so i was i was i was practicing like crazy but then i also discovered in that time that i actually really didn't like um the people in that scene you know in the classical scene okay yeah. uh because it was very competitive and it was yeah. all about who could play the best you know and then we all had to play the same uh, concerto or something and then oh yeah this mm -hmm. like david is playing it much better than you you know stuff like that and it was very <laughs> competitive and when i finished that education around 14 mm -hmm. uh, when i did my exam um i was i wasn't i was the weakest i think of all the students i was still very good uh, but the okay. weakest and i felt like a like a loser you know and yeah. i didn't want to continue because i could continue uh, going into a uh, the next level of that uh, education but mm -hmm. i decided against it and i wanted to do something else so mm -hmm. i was still with my mind into the whole jazz thing so i found mm -hmm. a jazz teacher and to was jazz but, violin teacher yeah jazz violin teacher and i took two yeah two to three years of lessons but it it didn't take just because okay. And the reason was I came from classical and I had a teacher that said to me, you know, do this. And the next week you have to be able to play bar 50 to 80. Mm -hmm. But my jazz teacher was like, okay, what do you want to play? You know, it's like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to play? He said, just play a song. And then um, I had to play a song and then I had to improvise on chords, but I, I had no idea what chords were. Uh, major, minor didn't mean anything to me. So he had to start with me from the beginning and it was just yeah. too much for me. At that at that age like 15 i didn't get it and i th i was thinking i'm too late <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because um in my classical studies they were always talking like you know uh little jimmy he, he started when he was four you know and i yeah. started when i was eight so i was like oh we're already four years too late so i was like 15 that's probably much too late to start with jazz you know so i kind of gave up on that uh, after two years and um, i got hooked onto playing tango Ah. Um, because it enabled me to still use my uh, my violin chops as a war and my sound yeah. and be free because uh, in tango you can be very free with the music with the timing but I didn't have to improvise on chords right there was no yeah. like nobody said you know it's going to be rhythm changes no it was just like play these notes that were on the paper and I was good at that that, that was something I mm -hmm. could do but then I was free to, to to embellish in any way I wanted and um, that led to me uh, playing bandoneon mm -hmm. uh, because I was always playing with bandoneon players. And then mm -hmm. I stopped playing violin altogether and um, got a tango orchestra. I, I think I, then I was like, I started bandoneon when I was 19 and I had my own tango group when I was like maybe 21, 22. And wow. that tango group became very successful and mm. I toured for, for with that group for 10 years. Okay. So that is everything that happened before I actually started playing uh, Gypsy Jazz. Okay. And the that tango stuff, uh, you were were you were you you were writing the music, weren't you? I yeah, that was my group and in in tango the thing is um that your identity is is very much linked to your arrangements. Okay. Right. So that's that's the thing in tango, right? You you there's no, you 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 can't go to the store and say I wanna, I want to have uh, music for a quintet with for the for la compresita or something that doesn't exist. Okay. You gotta arrange it yourself. So there's two things you can either transcribe it from like famous recordings, yeah, or you can arrange it yourself. So I started doing that. I started uh, both arranging and transcribing, mm -hmm. and. The, the nice thing was because of my jazz violin lessons yeah. and uh, the focus on harmony with that teacher, although it didn't enable me to play jazz, it did give me very good insight into uh, harmony. So I was very natural uh, at arranging. And yep. uh, yeah, there was something that was very much suited to me. So I wrote all that music yeah, for 10 years, which was also the reason that I quit because it was okay. just too much work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Too much work, as in you'd have to you'd have to arrange arrange stuff quite regularly. Then you'd have to constantly be coming up with new stuff. Well, every year there was a new concert tour, 
right? Mm-hmm. And we were, and it was like maybe 60 to 80 concerts a year. Yeah. And I was expected to write new repertoire. Okay. And every year and we started working with guests, you know, and, and they had their own wishes. Yeah. And it was fun in the beginning. But mm-hmm. after a while, um, it became so much work and it became such a thing that I kind of feared at the end of the tour. Yeah. And that, um, yeah, it turned me off from playing tango, especially because during that time, I met uh, Stochel Rosenberg with the Rosenberg Trio. Yeah. Uh, I met him actually when I was arranging. I was arranging uh, some pieces for him and another project uh, which I had, which was an orchestra, mm-hmm. uh, which I was conducting and arranging. So in that time, oh. I was was merely uh, a bandoneon player and an arranger, right? Mm-hmm. But I still had my violin. Yeah. So I... I arranged for Stockholm, I arranged Embraceable You and Nuage. And for Embraceable You, I had this one album that he played with Grappelli. He recorded one yeah. uh, album with Grappelli. And Grappelli was playing the, the, the slow theme of Embraceable You. Yeah. And I played that with him. It was one of the first times I I got my violin out of the case and played something. And mm-hmm. uh, while we were rehearsing, he was he was nodding to me to give to do a solo, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and I didn't. And he said, "Why, why are you not taking a solo?" I said, "Well, I know how it works, but I, you know, it's just I don't have a. I didn't use the word talent, but I, I can't do it. I was too late to yeah. uh, to learn it. Right? Not like you. It's like you start, of course, when you were a kid. And he yeah. said, "You know, that's that's a shame because you already have that sound of Grappelli." Yeah. And I, I told, "Okay, you tell me how to learn this." I said, "You know what you should do is just." transcribe it was the yeah. first time that everybody that somebody told me transcribe every note that somebody else is playing so i started doing that i started yeah. transcribing grappelli and i mm-hmm. i started noticing that it started to work because um all of a sudden i had like nice phrases to play over uh, chords okay yeah and because it was so much fun and um much more fun actually than playing tango and also because I had to write all these arrangements for tango, I became less and less interested in tango and more and more mm-hmm. interested in uh, in playing jazz violin. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can imagine that makes sense. Yeah, and um, I remember you telling me quite a while ago actually that when you started getting into playing uh, jazz, you changed your technique. You sort of changed your technique to to the sort of same technique that you saw Grappelli had used. Yeah, um, it was a it was a combination of things. So, um I I was do, do, have you ever heard of of Sacha Bron, the violin teacher? Nope. He's the teacher of uh, Van Rapin and Vengerov, okay. right? right? Like like competition winners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my teacher came from a very similar school of teaching and she was also uh, an admirer of uh, of Bron. Wait, this uh, is your teacher when you were a kid, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, Bron was, um, he came, he came actually to the, the Netherlands to visit uh, my teacher. Mm-hmm. And we saw uh, then the very young Repin and Van Grof play. They were like maybe like three, four years older than me. And um, they were just, I mean, it was amazing to see. It was also very depressing because I, at that time I realized immediately that's a level I'm never going to. You know, I'm never gonna make. And again, we were like, yeah, but they they started when they were two, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but the thing was uh, with that um, school that was all about pressure, you yeah. know, like big ball, lots of pressure, and you had to like really uh, press down with your left fingers on the fretboards yeah. um, to because the the theory was that the harder you could press down, the better your yeah. art- articulation in yeah. fast runs, which yeah. which might be true. And when I've you had were a teacher a kid, you know, who was who said that to me actually. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a kind of Russian, Russian, sc- not the Russian school that I do I'm playing in now, but it's uh-huh. another Russian school. Okay. And um, when you're you know when you are like under twenty, that's all great. Mm-hmm. But then when you uh, like reach thirty and and above, that amount of strength that is necessary to play like that is starting to injure your yeah. hands, your shoulder, everything. Yeah. So when I started playing a uh, jazz violin, I was 
of course studying uh, Grappelli solos and I was searching frantically for videos of Grappelli. Yeah. Uh, especially when he was younger because mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to see how he played. And then there was this, yeah, now it's, you can, it's easy, easy to find. But on YouTube, there's this clip where he plays with Django uh, Jacques André, right? Yeah, They're sure. Train. Classic. And um, I saw that clip and I just noticed how easy it was for him to play violin. I mean, it looked so easy. I, I didn't yeah. see any stress. I didn't see any apparent efforts. It's also, yeah. you can also see when he's older. But when he was older, he wasn't playing like the high stuff as much, you know. Um, mm. And when I saw that and still have, have that amazing sound, I, I became very interested in what it was what it was doing like the the way yeah. of uh, playing so i started searching and i came into contact with people that were schooled in um the late russian schools I, i'm not sure what if it's called the russian late russian school but it's the school that produced players like uh milstein okay. Heifetz, yeah which was all about no shoulder rest okay and a russian bow hold Right, yeah. So then I and I then I watched Corpelli and he wasn't playing with a shoulder rest. Now his ball hold, I'm not sure. It's very difficult to see. It could be French, uh, like the Franco-Belgian, that's the regular ball mm -hmm. hold, or it could be Russian. I'm not sure. But when I started um, diving into that material and started studying the Russian ball hold, I discovered that the Russian ball hold was actually a perfect way to uh, bow with the upper half of the bow okay which is what you do when you play jazz right? yeah so that was it when i discovered that uh knowledge and also when i saw that that school was all about relaxation and no pressure as uh like the thing is you have to press down on the fretboard as light as possible that okay. that's their thing it's like the opposite yeah um that's i thought i'm gonna change my technique so i changed my i took maybe a year to two years and i i had to start all over again basically right how old were you when the, when you did this when you changed around um let me see i think it was right after i met stocholo so mm -hmm. i think it was 27. i see yeah right yeah and i changed i started uh i had to start all over again And for yeah. for one year that was very difficult because I, in the beginning you're not able to do anything anymore, right? You you, you can yeah. play, you can change positions, <laughs> you can play fast, <laughs> you can do anything. So it, yeah. it, it took me another like two years to get to uh, my old level, and then when I started yeah. playing with the Rosenberg Trio, which was yeah. shortly after that, um, I discovered that uh, well that's no other thing, but like I was talking about playing fast that they were playing so fast. But yeah. I wasn't able to do that at all, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they do play very fast. They, they play very fast, but very clean. Yeah. Actually, but, I, I mean, you I, were, yeah. I was just saying you would have been quite new to improvising, or, you know, improvising jazz at that point. So playing fast is, uh, is, is not something that you want to start with. And I imagine that must have been quite hard if you're starting by playing with the Rosenberg Trio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, a, that's actually a funny story because the way that, Because I, I still remember going to uh, the festival in Gloucester. Yeah, I saw you there last year. Gloucester? Right? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Gloucester. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Gossington. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Gossington. Yeah, Gossington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, yeah. Um, the first year I went uh, was, I, was 2010 or something. I don't know. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe 2009. Mm -hmm. Some uh, I I just started playing with the Rosenberg Trio, right? right yeah. uh, but I didn't know anyone except for the Rosenberg Trio. <laughs> trio. <Right>. So <laughs> I came there and people were like, I, I I could play a little bit and I play pretty pretty well um, mm -hmm. already. Now, I'm yeah. not the level that I'm I'm now, for example. But yeah, and uh, people were asked, like, who do you play with? You know, I was like, I play with the Rosenberg Trio. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, who did you play with before it's like uh, nobody <laughs> so and the people were amazed you know like how did it happen and so the way that it happened was um 
So I met Stochelo for yeah. that orchestra project. Yeah. Uh, I wrote his arrangements. Uh, he motivated me to start practicing. Yeah. Uh, I changed my technique and started practicing just pretty much at the same time. But I didn't study any classical, for instance. So okay. it was only technique and jazz, yeah. right? And then yeah. transcribing Grappelli solos. So I transcribed like 60 Grappelli solos. Wow. I did it for like seven hours a day. I was practicing only that stuff. So after two and a half, three years of that, um, the Rosenberg Trio actually changed management to my management, mm -hmm. like the oh, management yeah. of my of my tango orchestra. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, my management was very strict about um, theater presentation. Like when they put a, a group in the theater, because they were about yeah. theater, were not about concert halls. They wanted a certain kind of lighting and they wanted a certain kind of presentation and like just the way that people should behave on a theater stage, which is quite different from a festival stage. Okay, and yeah. because I was so experienced with that, they figured that I should be the one to kind of um, lead the way for the Rosebook Trio to get some of that uh, theater thing going, right? Okay. So they said, Christian, um, you do this, tour, do this tour with the Rosebook Trio, you play some songs, Mm -hmm. But most of all, you make sure that it's a theater thing. Right? Okay. And th so that's why I, how I started playing with the Rosebud Trio. And the first concert, I played nearly every song. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the way they rehearse is that they never rehearse a whole song. Or okay. they can do that. But usually it's like, okay, uh, one chorus solo, you know. Mm -hmm. So in the rehearsal was okay. But during the first concert, when Stochla was playing five choruses. Yeah. And... Of these f super fast tempos, and I had to do it too. Yeah, I sucked. You know, I sucked <laughs> so badly that I felt horrible, and then I, I even felt more horrible after the concert when Nusha, the the rhythm guitar player, came to me and he said to me, um, "Are we playing too fast for you?" <laughs> so, <laughs> so then I knew Ooh. like everybody could hear it, especially them, <laughs> and and I felt so bad. That made me feel very insecure about playing yeah. uh, fast, right? Yeah. So. They cut me out of all the fast songs, okay. more or less. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, for that tour, the first the first tour, I was only playing like medium tempo, yeah, and uh, and like doing the announcements and stuff. And okay. I also noticed, of course, during that time, that Stochola was at such a high level that mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I needed to work even harder to yeah. actually be anywhere close to to being worth it playing with the Rosebud yeah. Trio. So yeah. the year after, I didn't tour with them. Uh, yeah. And then, but the, the, the year after I did. And for that okay. whole year, I practiced playing fast. That's the only thing I did, you know? Yeah. Super yeah. fast, super fast. Yeah. And um, I, uh, so the, the, the second year I toured with them was much better. But then like the sixth or seventh year, um, those, those fast tempos were no problem. Yeah. And, and when people now ask me like, um, because I hear people say, oh, it's so fast. They play so fast. I, I can see it. But the one thing that I learned from that is mm -hmm. the thing that Nush told me. He, he told me once, like, because I was complaining, of course. Yeah. He told me, you know, if you can play fast, mm -hmm. you can play slower too. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's true. Because now yeah. when I play like 240, 250, it's incredibly comfortable for me. Yeah. Yeah, Wait, and for the many people, is, it's, oh, that's fast, you know, but that's not fast for me. It's not fast. Yeah, the thing is, a lot of you know, there's a lot of contrary uh, advice to that as well, though, because a lot of times you do hear people saying, "Well, you need to learn to play slowly before you can learn to play fast." And so, yeah, it yeah can I, be quite I, I confusing for people when they're when they're starting out. But I, I do agree with you. You need, you know, if you're going to play fast, you have to learn. You know, you have to practice doing that. It isn't just playing slowly and then you can play fast. Exactly. So that's the thing that like what you just said there is that if you want to play fast on stage, you yeah. actually need to practice fast too. Yeah. But you need to practice slowly first. Of course. No, mm -hmm. I understand that. But there is, you, but like you said, there is some confusion about people thinking that the fast playing will just come if you yeah. practice long enough slow. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not the case because it's not only the, it's not only the, the mechanics of it. But yeah. it's also the thinking. Mm -hmm. And you have yeah, to totally. practice thinking that fast. Mm -hmm. And the thing yeah. is, if you practice that, if you practice thinking fast, then when the tempo gets slower, 
yeah. then you will feel an incredible freedom. Yeah. And yeah. it's actually very good for your creativity. If you can play a good, let's say good, like like a professional at 300, then you can be be very creative at 250. Yeah, makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. And uh, what would be interesting to uh, know is your sort of process of learning jazz. So how you, you know, the best way that you think that someone should go about learning to play, uh, to improvise on the violin. I mean, it doesn't matter about the instrument so much because I know you play guitar as well, but just your, your sort of approach to, to learning, you know, how, 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 would you, how would you say someone should go about it if they're first starting out? For starting out? Uh, so yeah. let's say you don't have any experience. This, this what you're you asking? can play. You can play the violin. You, okay, you know, yeah, you you've been, yeah. Um, so the interesting thing is uh, about that is I teach at the Rotterdam University for the Arts. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, at this time, actually, I don't have any uh, main subject students because the okay. ones I had, uh, they all graduated in the last two years. Yeah. So and of course, there's not a lot of people that want to do it. But I do mm -hmm. teach the occasional classical violin player who wants yeah. to learn something about jazz, right? Yeah. And they come into the lessons pretty much like I came into the lessons without mm -hmm. any knowledge. Yeah. Right? So um, what I focus on with them, and I think you, that's a good thing, is to focus on a, a song. Or okay. Which song do you want to play? That's yeah. the first thing, right? So, and, and of course, they, they can tell me any song but I make sure it's not too complicated so maybe they say like lady be good that's a good yeah. one right sure and then I start walking them through uh, the changes like so mm -hmm. it starts like G and C7 what can we do with those two chords yeah All right so I show them I show them some lines I make them copy the lines yeah I, I tell them you know play this line but maybe start a little bit later or make an embellishment so I, sh I show them how they could practice it themselves because then the next step would be you know if you want to know if you want to learn more lines yeah. you should transcribe and that's my thing right i said you should transcribe stuff you like see what what those people are doing and then take those lines first of things practice those lines and then look at the lines what are they doing it's like oh yeah. so this guy when it's uh c7 he likes mm -hmm. to play in f sharp or something so he yeah. likes to play so you could say sharp 11. So, yeah. okay, so make your own line with that F sharp. Now see if you can come up with something that features that F sharp. So that's mm -hmm. the way I teach, right? I, I tell them to transcribe and then we analyze the transcription and mm -hmm. try to uh, translate the, the lines into concepts. Mm -hmm. And I think okay. anyone can do that, especially today, because you just go to YouTube and you type in the song that you like and yeah. you, can, you can watch 100, ver 100 versions and then you just pick one that you really enjoy or maybe just a yeah. part of it and describe it start yeah. there yeah the thing is though nowadays there's so much stuff out there that people get a bit you know i think that that can be a, a sort of hindrance as well can't it yeah you know when there's when there's so much to look at you're constantly going oh well maybe i should maybe i should learn this or, oh this guy does it like this maybe i should do it like this guy or oh this guy sounds like this i like i mean i actually i so I'm just I'm just talking from experience. <laughs> no, I know it's, that it's the my, same as for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain just constantly changes all the time. I'm always thinking, oh, I want to sound like this dude. Oh, I want to sound like this dude. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, th that's that's actually very good, I think, because uh, people always ask me, okay, you're so you're transcribing, but now you're gonna sound exactly like uh, like Sochel Rosenberg, for example, when I for guitar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, because I'm transcribing. Uh, 30 other people too yeah yeah and, and i'm practicing all that stuff and of course mm -hmm. i can't remember everything but what yeah. will remain is a combination of, of all of that right and i mm -hmm. start combining stockholos ideas and concepts with uh concepts of uh charlie parker yeah so yeah. what comes out is something new yeah, yeah. without yeah. being completely uh unrelated to uh, the style of music i'm playing of course so yeah. um, that's the thing. If you transcribe, let's say there's two approaches to learning jazz, I'd say, of course, you can combine mm -hmm. them, but you could say, okay, we're going to transcribe and we're going to immerse ourselves in the tradition mm -hmm. of, of great masters in the past or current masters, mm -hmm. or we're going to take the approach, the theoretical approach and uh, learn the skills mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and everything that 
So mm -hmm. there's no really relationship to what, that, what anyone else played. Mm -hmm. But then the, the, the chances are that either you come up with something that you could also have learned from transcriptions, mm -hmm. or you come up with something that's actually theoretically correct, but doesn't sound like, let's say, gypsy jazz, just yeah. because there's no... It doesn't sound like it. And that's a very difficult concept to grasp, but you, you know it when you hear it. Yeah. I mean, you've heard it. <laughs> yeah. You've heard people play and think, wow, that's Those are some interesting, notes. but it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you just played some notes. Nice. Yeah, you, yeah, you played some <laughs> notes and they were, they were all in G or something. And but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I do know. And I think that that's actually, um, yeah, you can hear it. You can, and it, it is a thing that you hear from more from beginners and i guess that do you think that's because a lot of the stuff that you find in um well maybe i'm i'm making an assumption myself here and this is maybe what i think but perhaps i think that it's because you a lot of the time that's what the books say you know the books say look i mean i i had this big jazz theory book when i was first getting into it by mark levine and it was just oh, like oh yeah yeah another one yeah it was just like get these scales play them on these chords and it was it was really helpful but then i just thought that that's what you did and i sounded rubbish you know <laughs> it, well because the, that I, approach comes i think from berkeley right yeah. the chord scale uh, and that's funny thing because yesterday i was in the music store just mm -hmm. uh, i had to buy uh, uh, something for my guitar and yeah. then um i was waiting for them to get it in the back and I, I i was standing next to the books and i saw this one book it, it was called swing guitar yeah and i <laughs> opened it and at the first page uh, or like the it said like take the a train yeah and then it had a written out solo or like it looked like scales and then every yeah. chord and now even when there were two mm -hmm. chords in the bar had yeah. uh, a skill above yeah. it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then i was so looking stressful. at instructions and the instructions said learn this solo <sighs> and learn from which skill every note it's part yeah. of, but then when, I, when you looked at the line, right, it just, it was all for notes from the G skill, for example, but because, yeah. because the chords were A minus F and D7, yeah. it said Dori, A Dorian, yeah. D mixed linen. It's like, this yeah. is not the way, I mean, apparently yeah. it is a way because there's many great players that come from Berkeley, yeah. but this must be so incredibly boring in the beginning to practice because it's completely detached from from yeah. the end result but you're not gonna play like that you're not you're not gonna do that yeah i've never heard yeah. anyone especially let's say swing music because the book was yeah, called swing totally. i've never heard i you, you can you can hear that when charlie christian plays or or django they're not doing that no man no no they're, they're just making very not. nice melodies yeah that somehow also relate to the harmony yeah right. and it's it usually very... relates to like one key you know you could like it relates to if it's in g it relates to the g major scale and they're using that scale and they're just going between uh, around the harmony that's that that's sort of what it is right yeah and then and they're using loads of arpeggios of course yeah sure. for for instance django he, he loved to use a augmented arpeggio right yeah and of course he wasn't thinking okay when the d7 comes i'm gonna play <laughs> d augmented no, he just no. knew that sound on his guitar as a beautiful sound to play on that chord. Yeah. yeah. And then I don't care if you know it's de augmented. Just if yeah. you, it's, I always say that in my videos, I have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in almost every video I say, um, and I, I show something and then I say, you know, it's de augmented, but actually I don't care about the theory. I always say that. And the reason I say it, because I get a lot of flack for it. Like people say, why do you want to, why are you saying that you should be uh, trying to learn as much as possible? Why are you telling other people not to worry about theory? But the reason uh -huh. I say it is because I try to stress the importance of getting the sounds in your head, like yeah. the sound of it. Yeah. Just You know that that thing sounds great mm -hmm. and you know when to play it. That's all, yeah. you know, you don't have to know yeah. it's de-augmented. And the, no. the problem is, you, you, of course, you could know it's the augmented, but the problem is a lot of people, they get completely lost in the theoretical knowledge, yeah. right? They can say, oh, the augmented, but you know, you could also play, and they list off a bunch of other things. No, just mm -hmm. let me hear it. Let me yeah. hear what it sounds like. And then if I'm attracted to it, I'm going to transcribe it and then play yeah. it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I mean, I think I think that's how most people do think about it. It's just, it's, I, I guess, it, um, you know, it's it's just a way of explaining, it, isn't it? Theory. I mean, I like to know everything that's going on, and I feel like, but then some people don't. Like some people, they don't need to know it, or it they don't want to know it, and and they can still get that sound anyway because they've transcribed loads. Um, well, the, yeah, I I was exactly the same. I wanted to know everything, but that's also because of my first teacher, who was very much about theory. Right, very much, and 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 I'm very thankful because because of him, I know mm -hmm. a lot about theory, so yeah. and that's very use was very useful when I was arranging. But when I met yeah. Stochlo, I met someone who knew nothing, like uh -huh. he didn't even you could you could tell him like B flat, it means nothing to him, yeah. right? Now it means something to him. That's because of the Rosenberg Academy, which is this side that we have, uh -huh. right? Uh, and so we do workshops together, and people ask questions. And of course, when you ask questions and when you talk about music, theory is very handy because Absolutely. now we can talk about something. But of course, he's sitting there and then people ask him, um, when Stockholm plays over B-flat major seven, uh, mm -hmm. does he like to play the nine? I know. And then I, yeah. I have to translate it to Stockholm. And then I just show him on the guitar. It's like, when you play this chord, <laughs> you, do you like to play this note, right? But because he hears it over and over, now he knows like B-flat, he knows G. Yeah. But he, he, he yeah. doesn't know B-flat major seven, it means nothing to him. It doesn't, yeah. But if you play a B flat major seven, if he hears that, he, mm -hmm. he can play like for four hours interesting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the reason is because he just knows what sounds good on his instrument. Yeah. On yeah. certain chords or certain progression or, or certain songs. And yeah. so when I met him and I saw his approach, it was uh, an eye opener for me. Because mm -hmm. he was only busy with sound, yeah. right? Like, what sounds good when yeah and and you know and i couldn't even talk to i couldn't even ask him a theoretical question because he would never be able to answer me instead he would say w w show me right yeah and that was just approach was such an eye opener so that's the thing i try to uh stress in my videos yeah uh and also when i teach when I teach jazz violin, now uh, mm -hmm. violin players, they are a little bit different from guitar players because violin players, of course, they usually study classical and they they know the location of all the notes on the neck because uh, yeah. that's that's the thing, you can read music. So then I, I talk more into, uh, to talk to violin players, I do use note names and... Um, sure. Right? But I'm, I'm still talking about sounds. So it's like, like there, there's this... Uh, a C chord I say you know let's try this C minor 6 arpeggio right yeah. and then I'm I show them the notes and say okay let's improvise with those notes but I'm never I'm never saying you know what we're gonna do we're gonna try to play a part of the blues scale uh, and we add a you know I'm not I don't do that I just talk yeah. about a certain sound over a certain chord or a certain chord progression and with yeah. guitar players I would show them a shape mm -hmm. and with violin players I would say those notes but but some people say, okay, but what, what, what is this A on C? What is it? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I yeah. can think and say, oh, it's a six. You know, but yeah, th that is not important to me. Okay, yeah, hmm, yeah. Well, I, I, I sort of agree with you. I just do think I think everyone has a different way of learning, though. That's the only thing, you know. For me, well, I don't know, yeah, because I know that when I started, I wanted to know what was going on, and and then I, th I think I would have always wanted to know what was going on. And some people would have never wanted to know what's going on, and they would just end up learning what's going on as they as they progress. You know, I don't know. I just think people people are different, I guess. If I think if you're a teacher, yeah, and a workshop teacher, it's very good to know to know yeah, these things, totally. just so you can yeah. answer t uh, questions and also you can talk about it. Yeah. But if you are just at home practicing, uh, for for instance, mm -hmm. I I do remember I was transcribing a Corpelli solo on Django Steiger. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a terrible key a a, a is a yeah. terrible key people always say why say because there's only one song in a yes yeah, it's, <laughs> it's true. Jango Tiger. so you never practice playing in a so for guitar players of course yeah. no problem because it's the same as g it's only it's two good. frets up you get but on violin it's it's yeah but Corpelli plays a great solo in Jango Tiger. is it the point, is it the really chilled is, is it the sort of is it a really chilled recording and he said he's very it's really relaxed the way he plays is it that one yeah it's, it's just the original recording with the famous Django solo like yeah, 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 the, yeah. Everybody, there's no theme to Django's Tiger. Yeah, you know? yeah. They, they're, they're just playing they just, Tiger Wreck, but then only yeah. the, the improv part. So yeah. the, the thing, the theme that everyone always plays, which is just Django's improvisation, that yeah. recording. 
Yeah. So it starts with guitar, but then Acrobatic comes in. It's a great solo. It starts with a little like cheesy, a bluesy lick. Yeah. But then one point on A, he's playing a B half diminished arpeggio. Yeah. Right. So when I was transcribing this, it made absolutely no sense to me. Uh huh. It's like, but it sounded great, you know. Yeah. So I was actually at that time I was still like. Can I play it even if I know if I don't know what it is? Yeah, it's like I, I was kind of hesitant. Yeah, it's like no, I shouldn't. Be, I shouldn't play it because I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. of course I did do it, and it sounds great. I, in fact, when I do this, some people they say, "What is that?" You know. Yeah, and, I, and then I don't say to them, you know, it's I'm playing a retardation on the one chord, and you can do yeah. it both with half diminished, diminished, or yeah. double diminished. I I do know these things. Yeah. No, I said, you know, I got this from Grappelli. Yeah. It's on Django's yeah. Tiger. Listen to that solo. Because it is great, not only because it's this thing, but it's also because it's part of a of a of an amazing solo, which yeah, you yeah. should hear in its com in its the complete solo, right? Yeah, so, yeah. um, and then I would maybe now listen say, okay, let's try this. Let's try this song in G. And now you play when when I play the G chord, you play A half diminished. You now I maybe yeah. I would say that, you know, but yeah. Uh, I don't care if they would ask me why does it work. Mm -hmm. I can explain it, but that's not the interesting part of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Yeah, I need to check that out. Actually, I need to. I'm going to look for the uh, B half diminished on the A major. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but that's the thing I do a lot, right? So there, if the chords are G, mm -hmm. now we can talk some theory. I like to play A half diminished, or I like to g play G diminished, or I like to play um, E flat seven. Over a G, and yeah. So th those okay. are the, the those are the sharp the raised four uh, uh, subdominants, uh -huh. uh, which I found out later, of course. Yeah, uh, which is part of, of classical theory. It's just uh, it's called the German, the German or the French, the German, the French, and the English subdominant, something like that. That's that's okay. the, the the term for it. Uh, but it's just it's a great sound. So. That, that that is a trick I use on the one chord, and I, Sorry, that's the way I, I would don't think explain I it. Right? I don't think I understand it. So you got you're in G, and you would play. Yeah. You say an E flat, uh, E flat seven over a G. Yeah. is that right? Yeah, okay. because if you, so the four of G is C, right? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So if you raise the C to a C sharp, that yeah. degree is is the raised yeah. fourth degree of yeah, subdominance, yeah. and there's a couple of there's C sharp diminished, which is the same uh -huh. as G diminished. Yeah. There is a C sharp double diminished, uh -huh. which is the same as E flat seven. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a inversion, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and um, okay, yeah. So that A diminished is something else, but th uh, that kind of sound is just a retardation of the one chord. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes you could sense. even play uh, A seven also if you mm -hmm. want, which is also yeah. if you if you look at from the C sharp. So those those kind of sounds are are great. They're wonderful on the one chord, and both Django and Grappelli use this. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So I I hear guitar players do this all the time. Uh, like Stochler would do this all the time. He would, he would be playing D diminished on D, but the yeah. violin players they rarely do this. I I know it's yeah it's 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 what you're saying seems quite similar to the just playing like sort of looking at a a one major chord as a diminished chord for a moment is that sort of quite close to what you're saying well that is it that that's it but it's not actually one diminished or you could call it that but it's actually the raised four yeah okay because yeah. if you think in g and you think of c diminished yeah uh, c sharp diminished right yeah yeah now that's so it's c sharp e g b flat so the b flat would resolve to a b uh -huh. right and the c sharp would resolve to uh to the d uh -huh. and e2 so yeah. the, the, the the logical uh, progression would be C sharp diminished to uh -huh. G in the third inversion, yeah, right, uh, and then to D seven, mm -hmm. G. So it, that's a classical uh, progression: C right. sharp diminished, G with mm -hmm. a D in the bass, mm -hmm. D seven or mm -hmm. D, G. That's a classical uh, the classical yeah. progression that is in in lots of classical pieces. Mm -hmm. And that's where this one diminished comes from. It comes from that C sharp diminished resolving to the G. And because it resolves yeah. to the G, you can mm -hmm. also play it on G as a kind yeah. of uh, retardation sound, right? Everything yeah. that resolves to the one, you can play on the one. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. It's good sound. Um, yeah. What I was, 
we'll move on now to your videos because okay. you've recently start well you've been doing video you've been doing like online videos for a long time right youtube videos for a and, long time yeah yeah, yeah. you you had the the uh, rosenberg academy so you've been doing that for a long time well yeah but that's a paid thing of course but uh, my uh -huh. own youtube channel um yeah. you know um i think i told you once before but uh the reason so uh, my youtube channel I, I i tried out different formats and mm -hmm. uh, i think uh, most guitar players would know the format called uh, gypsy jazz replay uh -huh. which was a, very, a lot of fun but it was very much involved to make that and then i mm -hmm. migrated into this thing called gypsy jazz quick tips yeah which was still a lot of work so after eight episodes it was like no i can't do this anymore yeah and then i came up with the thing i'm doing now but mm -hmm. the thing to know about this is which is i've told no one <laughs> in public yet is that all these formats they are copies of gaming channels uh, uh, because uh, i grew up with uh, with with gaming you know computer gaming yeah and i don't have time to play computer games but i do enjoy watching shows about gaming that's the way i still connect to that side of me so you still is, watch uh, you still watch videos of gamers yeah you know i watch like street fighter tournaments and uh <laughs> like uh twitch twitch tv that's uh that's the, the gaming the platform for gamers to stream i watch that sometimes i'm i'm practicing my technique yeah and with a metronome and then i'm also watching twitch you know so uh -huh. but I saw these gamers <laughs> with uh, I, I enjoy watching these shows. That's the first thing. Like it, it seems kind of strange because you're not playing the games yourself. You're watching other people play. But it's just a lot of fun because it kind of reminds me of the time I was playing. So I was like, I, somebody's got to make these kind of shows for, for Gypsy Jazz, right? So I started copying these formats like a couple of gamers uh, playing a game and then um, analyzing what they did afterwards. Right, they're playing. Uh, uh, I don't know StarCraft, and then afterwards they were interviewed about what happened, and they would say, you know, at like ah. two minutes fifty, I tried to build this tower. So when I made the Gypsy Jazz replay, we were doing the same thing. We were playing a song, and I was like, yeah, at one minute thirty, I played this lick which I got from Django. You know? So it, it's it's <laughs> it's really a carbon copy of those shows, but nobody okay. ever ever said it to me, you know. So yeah. I, I probably there's not many gamers in Gypsy. I don't know. I feel like uh, there, I think that there will be a lot of gamers in in Gypsy Jazz. I, I yeah, don't know why. Be, right? It feels like it feels like there there should be, or it, it just feels yeah. I don't know. Maybe people are too too embarrassed to um to come out with it. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you I you've know. only just come out with it. So. Yeah, <laughs> but I was never an opportunity. I mean, this is the first time yeah, somebody yeah. asks me uh, about my videos. I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. an interview. Right. I'm not embarrassed yeah. at all. I mean, it's just if you come <laughs> no, to my you house, if you come to my house, you can. I have a, I have an Xbox and I have a PlayStation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't have time to play it, but yeah. Um, you, so you, you used to play a lot, though. Like, what what did you what did you like playing? Uh, let me see. Not that I know uh, that much. I'm not like a an, a, right. an aficionado. Right. So I played a lot of Street Fighter. Um, okay. I played, what, um, what, what, Street Fighter when? When was this? Like which Street Fighter? Oh, I still play Street Fighter now, but yeah. um, I used to play like Street Fighter One, Two. So uh, I did. I used to play that when I was a little kid. Yeah, me too. Yeah, when I was little kid. And I played, uh, of course, Mortal Kombat, and then I, I started yeah. playing all those, um, uh, like uh, open world games, like uh, yeah, GTA. Yeah. I pretty much yeah. played all the Grand Theft Autos. Yeah, um, you can go um, down a like, hole with that, can't you? Yeah, there is, and there is one uh, Grand Theft Auto. Uh, which one is it? No, there's one game called Mafia, and uh, yeah. there is a lot of Django. Uh, in you that. know, that's that's true. I haven't played Mafia, but uh, you know what? This is actually you were saying that you don't think there's many Gypsy Jazzers. I think there's a lot of people. I've spoken to people who said that they heard Django first by playing Mafia. That's not. It's yeah. I, I know some people. I'm not going to name their names, but uh, and that's that's how they got into it. So well, there's more yeah. games even because um, uh, Bioshock. You know Bioshock? No. Like the first one. There's there you you hear um, which song do you hear? Because in in Mafia you hear I think it's Belleville all the time. Yeah. And in Bioshock, I th maybe it's Nuage, but there's also you hear Django a lot. So yeah. Um, yeah. I was very happy to hear that first. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. I, I already knew what it was, but uh, uh, but uh, in fact, if you play uh, Grand Theft Auto, there is in, in the, when you steal a car, you can put the radio on any channel you want. But there is always yeah, yeah. There used to be jazz channels there, so I was always driving around the cities with jazz on the channel. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Did you not used to be able to put like like music from your um like that you've put on your system? I'm sure that yeah, was the you, case, that's wasn't yeah that's yeah the old ones, but in the new ones you can do that. So, yeah. uh, like the newest Grand Theft Auto, uh, which is Grand Theft Auto Five, I think. Yeah. Which is the one in LA? You can do that. Yeah. But there's lots of l- l- radio channels. But uh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. The, gaming doesn't really work if you want to practice, does it? If you get into gaming, I've noticed that because I did. I um, borrowed my brother's PlayStation. Most what is it? The PlayStation Four. Four. Yeah. When he was away, when he was away on holiday, and uh, my practice regime just basically melted into nothing for about like a month or so and i had to sort of just had to just break away from it or i would just or i would never practice again <laughs> i don't know it's, yeah it's, it's, well that's think, that's the thing right so i'm I'm very happy that i'm so obsessed with uh, practicing music <laughs> yeah because that's the only thing stopping me from uh, being obsessed with uh, uh what is out now uh uh like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which is the the big open world game now. Right. But I yeah. have it. I bought it because I cannot not buy it. But I played yeah. it for like three hours, and then you know, <laughs> and but you can play the game for eighty hours if you want to, or longer. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I need to practice. So. Yeah. Um, and I'm more obsessed with uh, practicing music than playing games. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the way I connect mm. to gaming, is uh, is through uh, Twitch and YouTube. Yeah, and then I watch every review, and uh, I watch everything like mm-hmm. uh, Angry Joe and Game Ranks. So, but mm-hmm. those shows inspired me to make my own videos. Yeah, <laughs> which is funny, of course, because most people think it is because I want to share my. I do, <laughs> <laughs> but that was not the inspiration. The inspiration. So, or people think, oh, you watch these other uh, channels with music educators. Mm-hmm. I don't watch a single one, you know. Right, uh, and that's also that's why my formats they are maybe different because they're not based yeah. on on those formats. They're they're based yeah. on gaming channels, except mm-hmm. for my last format, which is just me sitting and teaching. Yeah, and the reason I chose that format is because it's the easiest to to make for me, because I mm-hmm. would love to do a more elaborate thing with multiple cameras. Yeah, but you know these these gamers they have like four million subscribers and they have a whole yeah. team, right? Yeah. And they pay people. I. I mean, I have now have like nine thousand subscribers almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't pay people, for, <laughs> so I, yeah, I needed the format with one camera and no, almost no editing, and uh, yeah. that's the format I have now, which is the mm-hmm. most successful, also. So, mm. yeah. So actually, the question that I was going to ask you, it wasn't maybe we. You've basically had some. Uh, you've recently had a lot of sort of. Um, traffic, right? Like you, you, it's recently sort of more like maybe blown up a little bit for you. There, you've done, you've got more people watching you now, and you recently had quite a lot of, uh, well, a couple of uh, trolls. Is that right? <laughs> so yeah, the the thing is, I had one viral video, <laughs> okay, uh, and it was a complete accident. So you have to imagine, I had before the viral video, I think I had twenty nine hundred subscribers, which uh-huh. I managed to gather in like years. Like, yeah. Gypsy just replay. Now I have nine thousand subscribers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Five thousand of the subscribers came in the last month. Wow! And it's because of that viral video. And mm-hmm. I didn't plan on making a viral video. Yeah. And most of my videos they take some preparation, sometimes a lot, because I need to practice. You know, I I need to do something to show. So I'm, I usually mm-hmm. take things I'm practicing myself. I need to write tap, and then I need to. Pre- to show it, demonstrate it. Of course, I make a mistake. I have to do it again. Stuff like yeah. that. But that video was like, I just, I just came from. I think I came from a rehearsal where people were behaving in a way that I didn't like, like testing other right. people's ears, like. Okay. So, no, yeah. that's, those are the wrong chords. Let's play these chords and then playing those chords without saying them, right? Mm-hmm. And I hate that because I, yeah. I think it excludes many people. That mm-hmm. cannot hear it, and they're, 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 they can't say it because they, they when they say so it, then, so I always say, it. Yeah. I don't hear shit. I always say, it. just <laughs> what are yeah. those the names? Yeah. Even though usually I do hear it, but I just wanna. I hate that attitude. So yeah. I came home, and I think in kind of not angry, but kind of like 
somebody's got to say something about this practice. Yeah. I made that video, which is called uh, the only skills you need to be to become a good jazz musician. Hint, it's mm -hmm. not ear training. Uh -huh. And I just put the camera there and I talked for half an hour without yeah. a script, without yeah. any preparation. And I didn't play. I played yeah. like a five notes in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that video got 40,000 views in the first week. And now it's almost at 100,000. Yeah. And yeah, so a lot of people wow. watch that. And, and in the beginning, the, the first week was hilarious because, of course, then you're obsessed with the, the statistics app to see what happens. And that yeah. first week, that video was shared constantly through wow. uh, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, like the whole day, like every mm -hmm. every second that that thing was shared. So lots of people were either very angry with uh, the video, with the message, <laughs> or they really liked it and they were sharing it with all their other friends, yeah. right? Which is what happens when a video goes viral. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's like lots of people came out of the woodwork, um, yeah, uh, th really liking it, but. Of course, there was many people that really, really were mad with me, saying yeah. that I was like poisoning the, the minds of young musicians with my mm. garbage, and uh, and sending me very angry messages. Uh, yeah, still, and it still happens today. And sometimes the messages get so uh, poisonous, almost uh, that yeah. I, I I share them on Facebook. You know, yeah. not because I'm bothered by them. I'm not bothered by them at all. I just uh -huh. find it very amusing. <laughs> yeah. So I sometimes I engage with these people just for fun. Yeah. And now I do it, especially to make these entertaining Facebook uh, threats. <laughs> and it works because I put these messages on Facebook. And normally I put a message like, yeah, I'm playing there and there. And I get like 10 likes and uh, and, and nobody comments. But I put yeah. this on Facebook and that's like <laughs> 60 comments because you know, people want to talk about it and stuff. So, yeah, and I, internet I, trolls yeah, are I, funny. Yeah, they're very funny. So, and I always have the option because people they they message me like, "Why are you doing this?" You know, it's, it's this is bad for your mental health. And uh, but it isn't because you know I don't really care. You know, the well, people as long can as it do whatever. Bother you. Yeah. It doesn't bother me at all. And I can always block the people or uh, yeah, yeah. like delete the threats, which I which I sometimes do. Some people get yeah. so violently aggressive in the mm -hmm. common threads that I have to really like block them. So really, it's crazy to get. To get that, um, to get that worked up over, uh, over over music, isn't it? Yeah, but so when you read these posts, th so this is just these are just I I'm just guessing guessing right? Yeah. I'm not sure, but uh, probably I said some stuff in there which is very much. I think the people that are get that get that angry are either people that have their own students and are saying the opposite thing. Mm -hmm. And maybe the students saw that video and mm -hmm. said, yeah, you, 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 you were training uh, all these, hearing all these inversions, but this guy, this random guy on, on YouTube says that it's, it's bollocks to do that. So yeah. that it's either people that teach themselves and feel threatened by yeah. my message, or it's people that um, come from the opposite, so that they, they are doing the opposite thing. Uh -huh. And they did never reach the level that they think they should have reached. Yeah. So, because I think if you're a really good musician, like, and you're secure about it, why yeah. are you commenting on that video? Why like, do you care? Yeah. There's no reason for it. <laughs> yeah. In I know fact, what you mean. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I told many people, but uh, two very famous jazz musicians, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like super famous, like yeah. everybody has CDs. They messaged me in private. Yeah. To tell me that they love the video. Oh, really? And when we meet, I will tell you the names. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I want to, you know, they send me private messages for a reason because they know, of course, yeah. if they would say that on the video, they would, I don't know, I, they would get the same hate. I'm on hate. I don't know what happened. Yeah. But hey, wait, wait. Actually, you know what? You should explain because I don't think we've explained exactly what you said in the videos. You know, what, what exactly is your message that's pissed so many people off? So in that f video specifically, um, I say that there's too much focus mm -hmm. uh, in education. Yeah. Well, I don't say it like that. Actually, I say, you know, what you don't need to be able to do is be able to uh, hear chords uh -huh. or, or do any kind of training, ear training in that regard. Yeah. And um, 
there so i came from that rehearsal but what also happened was that i the day before i think i saw a video of a very good guitar player teaching and streaming live and he's a very mm -hmm. good guitar player right excellent guitar yeah. player and there was this one student uh, an older guy and mm -hmm. he said you yeah, know i have i want to be able to solo on the blues yeah and then uh, the guy said, okay, so play something. And this guy was struggling. Like he was struggling with technique. He was struggling with lots of things like playing the wrong notes. Mm -hmm. And then instead of like working on that, you know, saying like these here's some technique exercises and you know, you could play this kind of shape over G7. No, he said, yeah. okay, um, put your guitar away. Oh no, he didn't say that. He said, okay, can you hear which chord I'm playing? Mm -hmm. And the guy said, no, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And then he played another chord and the guy said, you okay. see, he said that's the problem you need to train your ears and then he said put your guitar away and he managed to work for one hour to mm -hmm. get this guy to hear inversions of a triad mm -hmm. and then there was an update like there was an old video like five months later uh, there was an update and this guy worked for five months with an app to yeah, try okay. to hear inversions yeah all right so and then the, the whole lesson was like which inversion am i playing first or second and i was i I was kind of mad because this guy paid for this lesson and yeah. the only thing he was being taught was to hear inversions. I know, let's say he would be perfect at that. Yeah. He would still suck at playing a blues. That That's yeah. the reason I made the video. So, I mean, that does make a lot of sense what you say, but then I guess, I think maybe when people see the, maybe people see the title and they think that you're saying, you know, if they have, if they don't re listen to the whole video, if the video, especially if the video is like half an hour long, yeah, it's really a lot long. of times people, prob you know, people just don't. I bet these guys didn't even watch the whole thing. You know? I think and so. And then they see yeah. they see this, the the video title, which is, which maybe suggests, or it doesn't even suggest, but people could take from that that you're not into any ear training whatsoever, and then they're gonna go, well, I don't agree with you, and then of course the these are crazy people and the more people you get watching your videos the more likely you're going to get a crazy person isn't it yeah so how many, how many watches happens, have you yeah. had how many views uh now it's uh it's, it's close to 96,000 96, <laughs> and a i lot. put the video up in february wow and so i so mean there's going to yeah. be someone crazy in 96,000 people isn't there yeah be. and it's getting still it's getting 5,000 views per week so really yeah i mean i made lots of other videos after that and nothing comes close to the yeah. the, the views of that video in uh i mean and the second video i'm the second watch most watched video i made is called forget about modes you know so it's yeah. it's all about the title uh but you're yeah. right i think these people they're not watching the video you know they watch yeah. the first 10 minutes and then they yeah. they get mad and they scroll down to watch for other commenters yeah and, and then you latch onto one saying that I suck, you know, and then yeah. they feel like, okay, yeah, this guy's right. I'm going to write something <laughs> too. Yeah, I, uh, this guy agrees with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they say, I agree with you completely, Bob. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People love that. People love to just get angry, you know. <laughs> but there's also this very excuse. funny forum thread on uh, a guitar forum. Uh -huh. Also, this video was shared on pretty much every guitar forum you could think of. Yeah. Um, it was. Uh, it was. I saw this thread. I never commenting on this thread, but I, I find them, of course. Yeah. And then there was this guy. Said, yeah, I watched this video. It's very unusual. Um, I'm not sure what to think of it. And then that's where the next answer is. Oh, this is like Bullocks. It's some amateur. And yeah. then the third video is. Um, yeah, I watched some video of him playing. He's actually pretty good. <laughs> and then. Yeah. Um, a lot of people start, yeah, that is, it's puzzling. And then one guy said, I know what it is. He's trying to sell his, his course, you know. He's just <laughs> lying. <laughs> this guy is lying. Um, he's not telling the truth. He just wants to sell you his course. And then this other guy said, but there's nothing for sale. It's like, you just wait. <laughs> <laughs> in three months, he will have this course that will make you into uh, Gilad Hexaman in five days, yeah. you know. So yeah. people, they think I'm either lying or yeah. people that don't understand what I'm saying, they think I'm either lying or I'm an amateur. One of those. It might, yeah, like, it might yeah. be just people don't understand. Like I think that people like to people like like big statements, and I guess that title was was, and I guess the whole point of the title was to be a big statement to get people in, you know. And well, I think when I think people like yes or no, they're like, well, is he saying yes or no? You know, does he yeah. mean 
yeah. hearing or not hearing. And I guess you're saying, well, just a bit of everything, mate. You know, you got to do. It. And and they're then they're thinking, all right. So you said no, no hearing. You know, and it's but just you saw the video. Like did you see? You see the yeah, video? I saw the video, yeah. Cause, yeah, 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 so, I saw the video. What yeah. did you think when you saw the title of him? Yeah, but when I see the title, when I saw the title, I perhaps did have that reaction. Maybe not. I was, I maybe looked at it and thought, yeah, I don't know about that. But then you listen to the video and you're right. You know, I, I agree with you. It isn't, um, it isn't all about, it isn't all about hearing which note is on which chord at all times. You want to be able to do it. And any time I've ever done any ear training i've come away from it you know i think it's done me good totally it's done me loads of good but it's not if i had only done ear training i wouldn't be able to play a jazz solo i, I would just have good ears um right yeah, yeah you just know. have good ears and yeah. um that's what i that's what i also say in the video i've i've seen so in all the comments too i've seen so many yeah. people i've encountered so many people in my life as a mm -hmm. musician that played absolutely amazing like much yeah. better than me yeah, but I hear more than they. Yeah, right. Because I have perfect pitch, so right. Uh, there are people. Yeah. I, actually, in the video, I I say at one point I have perfect pitch, but I say it very. When I say it, I don't want to say it because I know when I said that the people say, "Oh, yeah, you have perfect pitch," so it's easy to say for you. You know, how yeah. can you say uh, say something like that with perfect pitch? But the reason, actually, the reason I make these statements, mm -hmm. is because, I know. That perfect pitch is not, yeah, a, a pathway to playing good jazz solos because I had perfect yeah. pitch since I was eight, probably or something, like, or when yeah. I discovered it at ten, and then um, I couldn't play a jazz solo for many years <laughs> after that. Yeah. So, and I've I've encountered people like uh, well-known people in rehearsals mm -hmm. where they had to copy a special and, yeah. they, and they, or five notes, and they would hit all the wrong notes all the time. Really? Uh, until somebody said, you know, it's like A, C sharp, E. Okay, yeah, then they had it. So, yeah. and I was like, okay, so these people, they can play great solos yeah. on any kind of progression, uh -huh. but they cannot copy this five note thing, which I can do like in my sleep. Yeah. Apparently, those two skills are in no way related. Yeah. Because these people, when they play solos, they still hear all those lines in their heads. Yeah. And they're not surprised by their own lines, but they're yeah. playing stuff that they know sounds good. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. If you know what sounds good, you just play what sounds good. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I can agree with you. Um, and and I, I definitely you agree so with you enough to not send you death threats anyway. <laughs> wow. There is, of course, I mean, you did an interview with Cha. Yeah. So Cha has maybe some of the best ears yeah. I've ever I've ever encountered, and th so there is exceptions of. Th I think there are people that can actually come up with with genius melodies in their head mm -hmm. uh, without having ever like thought this out or transcribed it or combining things they transcribe, but they just hear these melodies. Yeah, and then they and because they have such good ears, um, they can translate it to their instrument immediately yeah. yeah right so i can what i hear i can translate it to my instrument but i might not when i would only trust on my what i hear and not so of course now i hear all yeah. kinds of lines because i transcribe but that's before that mm -hmm. then the lines i would actually play would not be interesting so with, with okay. ja, it's i think he listened to so much music that yeah, yeah, probably the it. stuff he hears is i'm probably it's the same thing you know yeah. he, he always says to me no i never transcribed but because he listened to so much music and was always yeah. involved with music, yeah, that's for him. That's already transcribing. You know, I need yeah. I need more time, so I need to sit down and figure it out because my ears are not that fast, right? I have perfect yeah. pitch, but if you play f uh, fifty notes in a row, I won't remember the first forty. Yeah, but with Cha, I think he would remember it. Uh huh. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. maybe his memory that is so good because he hears a piece of music. And he will remember it forever. And it's almost <laughs> like instant transcribing for him. Yeah. Because yeah. when he plays, the lines that he plays, they are not, they're still very much uh, tr like connected to tradition, right? It's not like, yeah. oh, I've never heard anything like this before. Yeah. So the process is probably the same. 
but he, yeah. he 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 not, he doesn't need the time to sit down and subscribe. Yeah, he's and, got and really most good people memory, do. He? Yeah, yeah, most people do. I think I I need it. Uh, I think let's say 98 percent of people it. actually need to sit down and subscribe slowly. I totally do. I totally do. Uh, yeah, and I think you're right. Most people probably do. Well, that's the thing is your videos are uh, not. You're not aiming your videos for uh, musical geniuses. I know that sound. I mean, that may sound a bit harsh, but you know, you're not. You're not aiming your your video isn't aimed to teach someone like Cha how to learn changes. It's to teach no, people who, who 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 need help. You know, like uh, like a lot of a lot of us do, and that's what the videos are there for. So you are. You've got to. Yeah, yeah. You're you're that. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, do you transcribe? Just um, me? Boring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, I think I've never, I've never been very good at getting whole solos down, but um, I've, I have done it a bunch of times because I, I went to, I studied a, a jazz course for three years, and um, we had to do, we had to, one of our modules was, like, was actually to like, to get down like it was like ten minutes of of, of solo, you know, which is quite yeah. a lot actually. If you, when you've got loads of stuff going on, but yeah, and I've always transcribed. I'm, I'm at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm working on Charlie Parker over Cherokee. Oh yeah, oh, that's a great solo. Have you tra have you transcribed that, that? Yes, I've transcribed that. Um, have you? Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Because did you ever see just so Charlie Parker? He was obsessed with Cherokee. Yeah. Um, and uh, I saw a documentary about it. He was like obsessed yeah. with that song. So, uh, actually, he wrote a. Are you, are you describing Coco? No, no, it's it's it, no, it's uh, it's Parker's early recording with just him yes, and guitar. Right. But also check out the one uh, Coco because that's the okay, yeah, the, that's his that's Cherokee too, right? So then he is yeah, more yeah. Uh, evolved already. But yeah, that's that's yeah, a great I solo. I mean, for me, yeah. that 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 solo, that that early one is like the best. And I've been trying okay. to be honest. I've been working on it for. a for like years I feel, I'm really bad for like going in and out so I started it maybe two years ago um, and then sort of stopped because I just got ah, I'm, I'm done you know it's just it just it just disappeared out of my and then I suddenly went god I, actually what made me do it again was seeing um, I'm friends with Matt Glasser on Facebook do you know Matt Glasser mm -hmm. yeah 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 well mm -hmm. he he put up a video of one of his students playing it playing it along with the recording and she plays it absolutely perfectly like it's unreal and i just saw it and was like god i've got to do that <laughs> yeah you should check it out actually you should check, check it out I, i've got the video i can send you a link to it because she does it really oh nice well. yeah i want to check it out sort of but i think to, what you just described in, yeah is the way right you want to subscribe until yeah. you've had fed up with it and then you just yeah. stop because if you're gonna force yourself i don't think that's that's healthy i mean i transcribe at any point in time i'm transcribing like 15 people at the same time you know right and i never yeah. i never transcribe a whole solo i mean I, sometimes i do but you say you used to like, though right yeah i used to do that yeah that's the way i started right my source for violin was only Capelli in the beginning yeah. uh -huh. and so i transcribed complete solos of Capelli. uh wrote yeah. some down but at one point that was too much work so i just started uh like memorizing them yeah and that was very helpful, but of course it made me sound exactly like Rapelli. Yeah. which made me very happy, of course. Yeah. But uh, I, I also realized that that was not the way. So I mean, that's uh -huh. not. I, I wanted more, so I just started transcribing other people, and then I noticed, okay, if I transcribe like parts of this solo and parts of that solo, and I started seeing or hearing the lines of Rapelli that I used to play in combination yeah. with those other lines, so now I, I rarely transcribe complete solos. Uh, yeah. I transcribe parts, and now, right now I'm completely lost into uh, uh, Peter Bernstein ah. and Pasquale Grasso, which are two guitar players, very opposite ends of the spectrum, yeah. the way they play. But yeah. you know, I've trans I'm transcribing them constantly, Peter Just, and, uh, both for amazing. guitar and violin. So yeah. you're putting them on the violin. Well, um, so the thing is. Violin is, is is a different instrument for me, right? So guitar, mm -hmm. it's very much tied to uh, fret numbers. So like, mm -hmm. oh, play this at the fifth fret, you know. Uh -huh. um, and guitar and violin is very much tied to notes, yeah. But because but because nowadays I'm writing everything down, uh, yeah. B uh, just to remember it, but also because I can maybe use it in a video. Uh, yeah. Then I see the notes constantly on my screen. 
Uh-huh. And so it's very easy for me to actually translate that to the violin, even without my violin. It's just, I yeah. see it. And it's like, oh, it's just the E-flat major seven that you know. So um, practicing guitar for me is also practicing violin. Yeah. Because I rarely practice violin anymore. I mean, I, I did enough of that, or I never did enough, but I cannot practice six hours a day guitar and then also three hours a day violin. So yeah, it's like the six hours a day practice for guitar uh-huh. also benefits the violin. Sure. Yeah, definitely will do for your, for your improvising. Yeah, but also no other things too, like timing and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, so actually, it seems so. You, yeah, your your violin playing is is sort of, I'm not saying taking a backseat, but you are, you're focusing on your guitar at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I started playing guitar six and a half years ago when the Rosenberg Academy opened. Yeah, I think the Rosenberg Academy opened seven years ago. Mm-hmm. And then after having, because I was the one that was doing all the communication with uh, on the forum yeah. and stuff and answering questions, yeah. and uh, I didn't play guitar, <laughs> so people right. were asking me like, "Yeah, <laughs> like when Stokolo uh, does this pull off, you know, or, what does it mean, you know?" Or what? Yeah. and I would say, "You know, yeah, what he was trying to do is this thing," and yeah. I wasn't making things up. I was analyzing the videos, and yeah. I, I, I'm very good at that. Right yeah. now, I can say that because people know can see that's true. But back yeah. then, of course, nobody had any clue who I was. So mm-hmm. at one point, they were asking me, like, hey, what kind of guitar do you have? That's, that's like, there was this thread, like, what guitar do you own? And then <laughs> someone said, Christian, what guitar do you have? And I didn't even have a guitar. <laughs> or I, I had this, like, really, like, rinky-dink nylon string. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and I was, at that point, I felt like a cheat, of course. Because yeah. here I was, like, teaching people to play guitar mm-hmm. through Stoholo without mm-hmm. being able to play any of it myself. Yeah. And so I, I, I didn't say that, of course. Yeah. And uh, I thought, okay, I just got to do it. I just got to learn how to play guitar. And yeah. in the beginning, I was like, just enough so that I can explain it. But then I became completely obsessed with the thing. Uh-huh. And, uh, and now, at this point, I have just as much guitar gigs as I have violin gigs. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, I started practicing like, Every day, six hours a day, seven hours a day, yeah, uh, nonstop. I still do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, well, that's great. Well, I think you know you'll have just learn. Uh, you know, you you're going to be really good at, at learning. You're going to be really good yeah. at learning music. You know, you, from uh, doing that with a violin actually, for yeah. so long. Yeah, and also instruments because I've I've now learned to play a bandoneon guitar. Yeah, uh, and double bass. I I didn't say that, but I actually have a. Dipl- uh, a diploma for uh, you call it diploma? What do you say in English? You got a uh, when you graduate a, a did you university. do an under like a full under, undergrad course like three years? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah you got no, four years. Yeah, for double got, just double you got, bass. You got a degree. <laughs> oh right. Yeah. Wow. Because when I I couldn't do the jazz violin thing, it didn't work. Yeah. Um, I just randomly took some bass lessons. Yeah. And I, I thought, oh, this is much easier, you know. And then I right. just auditioned for <laughs> bass, and I got accepted. Yeah, and uh, I I did the double bass thing, and it was super easy because I was just playing like walking bass lines, which is very yeah, easy yeah. to do, and nobody cares about a bass solo anyway. So <laughs> I usually said no bass solo. No, I don't. I don't need the solo, and I just played bass, and I I graduated uh, yeah. on the bass, and then I the first thing I did was setting my bass, <laughs> right? Because I didn't like playing it at all, right? But the th- yeah, I thought I need to have the I need to have this diploma, right? Yeah, uh, that would be good for my future as maybe a teacher. Yeah. And I knew I was never going to get it for jazz violin, even yeah. though it didn't exist. But you know, uh, mm-hmm. so I thought, I, yeah, let's get one in jazz double bass. Mm-hmm. So I have that, but I never play double bass anymore. Right? Yeah. So do you, do you have a double bass? No, no. Oh, wow. I I bought a double bass for the. I actually when I applied for the for the school, I didn't even have a double bass. I just took some lessons, right, with another conservatory guy, right, and. Uh, in in three lessons, I was playing technically better double bass than than he was playing. And he was very frustrated with it. I thought, I know, let's uh, let's apply. And I was accepted without in, having an instrument. Actually, when I walked yeah. in, they said, "Where's your double bass?" I said, "Well," he said, "It broke this morning, and uh, yeah. I had to bring it to the luthier." And I said, "You expect us to take you seriously when you walk in without a double bass?" But there was a double bass in the room. I said, "Can I use that one?" Yeah, and it was a really bad one. And I 
and I got accepted. It's like, okay, now I got to buy a double bass. So I bought a double bass for, especially for oh. that course. I took the course for for four years. I did an exam, and then the like two weeks after, I sold the double bass again because I was like, I'm never gonna play it again. Because <laughs> I was That's playing Bandoneon. Uh, I already yeah, started yeah. playing Bandoneon too. I started Bandoneon after that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, it seems I think you've I got a lot of confidence. I w yeah, I don't know if I would have been able to do that. It's like not. Well, have, I don't know. I just did an audition, you know. Yeah, I, don't yeah. know what, I didn't know what was gonna happen. They accepted me, so it's great. Yeah. Yeah, but amazing. yeah, I I, for, I I seem to forget that I play double bass. I mean, I yeah. never tell that because, but I do play double bass. Uh, I play pretty well actually, but uh, I'm not sure how well it is now. But yeah, I mean, I graduated with with a uh, with honors. <laughs> wow, amazing! Yeah. It's insanity, amazing. but uh, yeah. Hey, one thing I wouldn't mind uh, chatting to you about. I remember we've chatted before, once before, about different keys on the violin. So I know that like a lot of people have different ideas of um, of that and and different key and well basically what I do you know Grappelli never played in any keys other than the sort of violin friendly ones and I know that you have opinions on that and I just yeah wonder if you talk I about do it. yeah strong opinions well the thing to know about Grappelli is when he was older. Like mm -hmm. after Django, like when he he got famous again around sixty five. When he was sixty five, right? He was playing in hotels, yeah, in Monaco and stuff, and nobody knew who he was. And then I think around sixty three, sixty five, mm -hmm. so not ninety six five, but when he was sixty five, yeah, he got famous again, once again. Mm -hmm. uh, he only played in D, G, C, A minor, E minor, and F. Right? Yeah, he, he never played any other key anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, but of course, when he was playing with Django, there was more keys. Right? Yeah, Deflet. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they even played like, I actually, yeah, like the early stuff. I'm sure Tiger Rags in A flat, isn't it? So yeah, well, yeah. But there's there's a couple of chords in Tiger Rags. The, the Tiger Rags in A flat, he plays a very simple solo. I mean, it's beautiful, yeah. but it's very simple, right? It's just it's very high up, though, isn't it? It's very yeah. It's, it's like, mostly you know. in the in the it's, yeah. It's a it's a kind of Grappelli trick that I figured out how to do. Ah. I call it the the power position on violin. It's it's a thing. It's a fingering thing, which you can do in any key, and that uh, I got it actually from that recording and a, a couple of others. So when I have to play very fast mm -hmm. in A flat, I will do the same thing. All right. Uh, but I never developed myself to play really well in A flat, and that's because well, there's a couple of reasons. But the most important reason is that in gypsy jazz, which is what I play mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody plays in those keys yeah so instead of me becoming semi-proficient in a flat yeah i opt to become even better in g okay for instance yeah. right yeah um so i always when somebody hires me for a gig yeah and i say i go until e flat yeah right one way and mm -hmm. the other way i would go until let me see d i would do um a, you must play in it's A. Not, it's, e, I would still maybe do, but that's it. So, but I'm not happy in E and A, but I could. No. It's okay. Uh, but like the flat keys until E flat. So A flat, I bow out. So I remember mm -hmm. still playing, uh, remember playing with Remy Harris. Oh, yeah. The first time I played in the Gossington Festival yeah. was with Remy. Yeah. Right? And Remy wanted to play Donna Lee. And <laughs> Donna Lee's in, in A flat, of course. Yeah. So I told him, okay, it's not a problem. I can play the theme in, in A flat, but then for the violin solo, modulate to G. Right? Yeah. Play everything one fret lower. No problem. I you know what's funny solo. is I've heard yeah. that story from Remy as well. Because <laughs> ah, okay. I played with Remy for a while and I remember, and he wanted to play Donnelly with me. And I was like, ah, oh, but you know, you play it really fast. And he was like, yeah, but you know, Christian, he just did this. So we can just do that. I was like, all right, let's just do that then. So maybe, you know, you you paved the way for me to uh, enjoy oh, my solo. The, <laughs> yeah, but this is, Tiger Rex the same thing. Like Stockholm wants to play Tiger Rex, but he wants to play it in original key. Have I lost you? I, I nearly lost you then, but I think I think you're back here. Okay, so yeah. So it's, uh, Tiger Rex the same thing. Stockholm wants to play wants to play Tiger Rex. Yeah. At 340. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's videos on on YouTube. Yeah, and uh, I said sure, but the violin solo in G, 
Yeah. Said, really? Why? Why? I said, <laughs> so you, otherwise you play the violin solo. I said, no, no. Yeah, we do the, <laughs> and it's perfect. You yeah. don't even notice, right? It's just, it's just an, a normal way to modulate. In fact, yeah. there is now, um, I, I recently discovered like uh, maybe a month ago, there is this, I think a Greek ensemble. Uh, it's just two guitars and bass. There's no, even, not even violin. Mm -hmm. They're playing that arrangement of <laughs> Tiger. Oh, really? The one that I recorded <laughs> with the Stockholm. So they uh. even play some of the licks I play. So they, they probably think now, okay, so we've got to start A flat and then modulate to G. But that, yeah. I just did it because Functional. I can play well in A flat, yeah. you know, so. Um, so when Do you never students... have to play with with uh, with like horn players. Um, well, if I go to a straight ahead jam session, I might, but then I just yeah. don't play those songs. Yeah, and and yeah, I, yeah that's I know I know what, I don't know what you what your thoughts about it are about this, but I have encountered several people that think that's completely ridiculous that I do that. It's okay. like you should be able to play in any key, and. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't agree. Just well, agree. I just I think it just depends on what 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 you do a lot of, doesn't it? Because like if if you're if the, if you're if if you're always playing gypsy jazz, then you just want to work towards that, don't you? And that is just playing in those keys, and you know the, the you you don't you don't play in like you don't play in like D flat very often. You maybe sometimes no. in A flat. No, I would never. But um, but uh, I don't know. I know that I. I spend, I don't know, I get gigs sort of semi-regularly where I'll get stuff called that I know, but in like a different key because I know it from like Gypsy Jazz and it'll be like, no, we'll do it in A flat or we'll do it in D flat. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think that's that forced me to sort of, to just go, like, okay, well, I'm doing these gigs and I enjoy these gigs because the bands are great and, it's, uh, and, and we're playing nice places. So, you know... I'll, I guess I'll work on it, and and that was the reason I did it. And I, I don't know, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't understand. Yeah. I think in you know in Indian music they don't like they'll just like learn like like a I don't know like a sitar player or whatever. They'll just learn. They'll they'll tune their instrument to like D, and then they'll just play everything that they play in D for the rest right, of bluegrass their life. Bluegrass the same thing, right? The guitar yeah. players and the banjo player, and the yeah. double player they all use a capo. Yeah, and then the violin players they don't, but the the keys in the bluegrass They're are always, always G yeah. A F or yeah. uh, C or D. Yeah, I mean but I hate playing in the, in in things that aren't those those keys. <laughs> or I I know I don't hate. I mean I don't know. I think you have found B flat and, and and E flat. You know, and even A flat after a while get gets okay. But so so that's a, the funny thing is my favorite key of course to play is D. Yeah. Right. D D is my favorite key, but then the second one is B flat actually. Right. And um, the reason is because in swing music, when you play in B flat, there's lots of great chords. C seven is there. Yeah. And G seven and D seven yeah. F seven. If you look at like um, uh, Sheik of Araby, yeah. it's all those chords. And and F seven is a great chord too. Yeah. So because that's basically a minor with a flat five, and that's just yeah. an easy thing to play on violin. So. Yeah. Um, I like I like B flat. Yeah. Uh, a lot also because it's easy to play high for me yeah. in uh, B flat because I can use that uh, what I call the power position what is this power uh, position yeah that's just the name I come up came up with but um, yeah it's my concept for playing high on the violin okay because the one thing that is very nice about Corpelli that is kind of missing from a lot of jazz violin players is the yeah. beautiful high stuff that he was doing yeah and um I I I thought okay I need to figure out how to do this so I transcribed I made a PDF with mm -hmm. all the high phrases that I could yeah. find in all the Corpelli solos, uh -huh. and then I analyzed that and I I figured out how he, how he was doing it. Okay. So the power position is a position on the violin where your first finger is on the fifth uh, of the chord and your fourth finger too, and from that position yes. it's very easy to go even higher. And also to play lines in the position. Um, okay, it's, it's very like third to... position in D. Uh, no, third position in G. Right. So if you're in G, and your first finger is on D on the A string, your and... first. Yeah, so it's on the A and the E string, right? So your first oh, finger right, is on okay. D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that okay, position, makes sense. So there's I thought lots you meant of phrases e you can play. Like, da -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. And then it's very easy. I have a skill system 
which runs up from that position mm -hmm. to very high. And it's always uh -huh. the same for every key because you only have to shift that position up. Yeah. And so I was, so if you, you know Dolan Jones, right? Because he lives yeah. in London too. Yeah, I know So Dolan. he was a student of mine at the conservatory. Uh -huh. uh, he stopped with his... Uh, uh, yeah. His, but then um, that's the one. So if you ever meet him, you, you could ask him and he can show you the notes, the yeah. things, because I wrote it down. And um, I've had lots of violin players uh, ask me about it because um, they recognize when they see me play, hey, that sounds pretty much like Rapelli playing high. And mm -hmm. um, that's it comes from that. So it's very different, okay. for example, from Cha, because what Cha does is he plays exactly the same high FC people that's that's very difficult right he plays what uh, sorry when when Cha plays high he's still yeah. playing very melodical like he would play like in first yeah. position but yeah. I know he worked his ass off to be able to do, to do that yeah right and I could still do that but <laughs> yeah. I have this thing which is much easier yeah. which pretty much has the same effect you know so uh, I yeah. don't want to say the same effect because what he's playing is much more intricate but um I mean, for me, playing high on the violin is just a way to build excitement. Yeah, sure. So I leave all my sophistication, harmonic sophistication, and uh, chromatism, chromaticism mm -hmm. for the first, second, and third position, or actually it's yeah. just the first and the third. But then when I want to have this excitement, like yeah. building up to a climax, cueing yeah. to the lead play guitar player to play tremolos and stuff, I yeah. use this, this uh, high uh, power position. Yeah. And it gives me that. So, yeah. If you watch any video of me on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, you can see that. This is what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's good. I mean, it's stuff that I I'm I'm terrible at playing high. I spent too much time learning. Most of my violin playing, learning time and practice time has been without a violin teacher. Um, yeah. I never. Uh, I did have a violin teacher for a while, for a long time when I was a kid, but I didn't practice much. I was I, I was sort of I just didn't I wasn't a good student, so most most of my practice has been just with no violin teacher, and I've just spent most of my time trying to play jazz. I just, I just my my high playing is not not as as good as it could be, but it's something that I work on. I do. But there's I, plenty, actually, plenty of of people that that are not good at playing high because it's something you need to practice separately. Yeah, yeah. It's a big difference with guitar, you know. Guitar, you just mm -hmm. be, like guitar players say, couldn't you just like shift your hand up? <laughs> no, mm -hmm. it's like this, it's not yeah. a guitar. It doesn't work like that. I it's mean, if you, do that, if you start playing horribly out of tune. You yeah. start losing yeah. the, um, your uh, connection with the instrument. You start getting lost. Yeah. So, it just doesn't work like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, I needed to find a yeah. way out, and uh, I think I found it. In fact, there's, without mentioning names, but there was this other violin player who was watching a concert of me once, mm -hmm. and then he asked me specifically. He's like, "How do you do all that high stuff?" And I said, I mean, uh -huh. I, I was, I was basically back then. I was still developing this power position idea. You know, I was uh -huh. mostly relying back then on the grappelic I transcribed. And I said, you know, I transcribed yeah. every high grappelic there is. <laughs> I said, can I yeah. have this PDF? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, <laughs> I was very much protected. But now I saw a video of him recently, <laughs> and he was. <laughs> And I saw that he was he did the same thing because he was now playing the same kind of, of stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. So uh that was yeah. enough. For, for for me just telling him, you know, I just grabbed all the high stuff of Grappelli. Uh, and yeah. uh, that was enough. I, I mean that's basically what you gotta do. Uh, but I made a concept yeah. out of it. I made a concept because mm -hmm. I figured that Grappelli was actually not playing as liberally as he was in the in the first position high. He was sure. doing a specific thing. Right. So yeah. Yeah, and I don't. I think maybe with Cha as an exception. Um, Cha as an probably. exception, but I still remember going Most to his people. house, um, like mm -hmm. maybe four years ago. Yeah. And uh, we were jamming, and um, I noticed, of course, that he was playing high, but it was, it failed a lot of the time, right? So, yeah. um, and I said to him, you know, but that's very difficult stuff. What you're trying to do? He said, yes, but that's what I want. And that's what I'm practicing. And he. Yeah. And I remember the second time we came to his house. I could yeah. hear him from the street practicing that exact thing. Yeah. And now when you see him play, it's all flawless. But yeah. it took a yeah. long time for him to develop that. So I know yeah. the amount of work it takes to be able to play high like that. I think he's probably yeah. the only one th that can do it. Yeah. Uh, with that amount of accuracy. So, yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. I saw him recently. He was playing um, at the Cucumber. And oh, yeah. he, was, he was playing better than... He had a, he had a really rubbish audience because they were just all talking. Um, oh, yeah. Or not all, but there was there was a big table of uh, Chelsea posh Chelsea people okay. <laughs> chatting away in the back, and they were talking over him. And he and they, he was get you know not not you know not loads, but enough for for it to be you know. And he only he only plays acoustic, so that was the issue. Is that you know you can't you, c- you couldn't hear it some of the times. And he just um, you know he was still playing better than I've ever heard him play. <laughs> yeah, no, I was really getting, shocked. Yeah. But like yeah, but you know, he was even in one of these, even in a situation where the 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 audience is uh, annoying, he was playing. Still, I mean, I just wouldn't be able to do it. I don't know. It's crazy. It's yeah, really, it's he, practicing. He, yeah, yeah. But but yeah. but then I have to say, of course, um, there are many other ways to play really well, which d- do not involve playing that intricately in high positions. So that's just sure. wanna, uh, that's important thing because if maybe if you are a violin player that wants to get into jazz and you see that mm-hmm. you maybe think okay that's impossible yeah uh, but it's not i mean there's many other ways to play high up on the violin which is a big subject for violin players maybe if there are non-violin yeah. players listening like playing yeah. high up the instrument is is a big challenge yeah and it's something that will dis- distinguish you from many other violin players actually yeah. when i teach workshops I was teaching a workshop in uh, at Wintergrass last year, which is a bluegrass uh-huh. festival, right? Yeah. So I was teaching a gypsy jazz violin workshop, and the, there was like sixty people, yeah. and uh, it was all about that. Like, how do you? I cannot play that high, you know. It's like, how do you play that high? It's 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 a big thing in violin mm-hmm. playing playing high. Yeah. So if you find a way to do it, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. There's easier ways. Right? So if you ever yeah. come to one of my workshops, like people that are listening, well, yeah. I'll I'll discuss it. I'll show you what I do. I, it's yeah. not going to be instantaneous thing that you can do, but uh, I can I can assure you if you look at that system more or less, mm-hmm. you you could see that you could probably do that in a year or something. Yeah. So. Um, I lost that last bit of something that you said, but I, th- I think you're back, so it's cool. Hey, um, yeah. what's coming up for you in the next couple of months? Um, so June is completely um, filled with uh, US uh, US things. So I'll be at Django in June. Yeah. Uh, teaching uh, one day of guitar and then the whole week of, of violin. Uh-huh. After that, uh, before that, I'll probably be in Seattle, by the way, uh, just uh, hanging out. But uh, if there are people in Seattle that want to uh, have lessons, I'll probably be up for that. But And then after uh, January and June, I'll travel to Denver and do a workshop there, uh, mm-hmm. guitar mostly, because of, of course I'll teach a violin in January and June. So I'll do the, if you, so I won't be teaching guitar uh, only one day, but it's already filled up. So if there are people that want to teach guitar, they can still go to Denver after Denver. They said it will be July, June 18th. Then I will be in Dallas immediately after that for the same thing. Um, then I'll fly back. Then, of course, it's Samoa. You'll be there too, probably. Right? I'll be there, yeah. Yeah, so I'll be hanging out. Generally. When are you there? Uh, I'll be there from July 1st to n- July 2nd to 9. Okay, yeah. And I'll be staying in a big house with uh, Dennis Chang and lots of other musicians. Yeah, so it's gonna be a lot with of fun, pa- but we'll Petrus be as well. Yeah, sorry. With Patrus, uh, I'm not sure he's no, coming. House. He didn't come to Samoa for the last he's, three years. He's so. he's maybe coming this year, I think. Okay, might be. Yeah, it yeah. might be. I don't know. I know there's many. I think there's like nine people in the house, so it could be. Oh, right. Um But I'll be hanging around, jamming uh, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then uh, after Samoa, they said that's July. August, I might be back in the US. I can't say anything, but uh, yeah, could mm-hmm. be. I'll probably be in Germany in between. But then the big thing, the next big thing would be September in Ireland, the oh, yeah. Django Sir Lennon, right? Yeah. And then next year, March, I'll be also at March Manouche, the festival. Oh, will you? Yeah. Cool. And uh, possibly also a big festival after that, which I just got in today. 
I wish I could say, but I can't say. Um, so those are the big things. But in between, cool. of course, I'll be like gigging everywhere. But like, if, yeah. if people want to see the big shows with the, like in in Ireland, we'll be with the Stockholm Rosberg Quartet. Cool. And uh, March Manouche will also be with Stockholm Rosberg. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I wonder if I might I might I'm, I'm, I may be there in March too. Um, okay, cool. I think we can probably wrap it up. You have been listening to the Jazz Violin Podcast. I have been Matt Holborn, and you've been listening to Christian Van Hemert. Um, please subscribe on iTunes or wherever you find all your podcasts. Um, it would be lovely if you could come again. Thank you very much. <laughs>